What's up everybody? Tiffany Outdoors here. Today we're going to do a DIY advent calendar. Stay tuned. There's the hawk. Before there was a Tiffany Outdoors, there was Tiffany the Farmer. Farm you can turn when possible. No, we're not. So, <laughs> so this idea came from Joe. I'm just going to copy it because it's such an excellent idea. And Joe, you want to explain more about, about this? Yeah, well, last year I made my grandchildren a um, advent calendar and I used toilet paper rolls. So I spent half the year collecting toilet paper rolls, which was fine and fun, but it was temporary. And I thought this year I'll do a more permanent advent calendar. That way um, I can get started for this year and my daughter and son-in-law can continue it throughout the years after this. And uh, my idea was to get those um, little tin cans, you know, the, what are those things called? The um, Altoid cans? Well, I ordered some from Amazon. They're completely plain and they're so inexpensive it's awesome so this year um, i'm going to be using the advent the advent <laughs> the altoid cans and with the help of tiffany because i'm not a woodworker at all she's going to help me with the wood part of this and she's making one for her niece and nephew as well right yep all awesome. right well let's get going let's do it all right, we've made our measurements. Joe is going to use a circular saw. I believe this is your first time using a circular saw? Yes. Okay, go ahead, go for it. Yeah. All right, are we ready? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to use this piece that was left over from Joe's cut, and it's just a perfect right size that I need. I'm going to take my belt sander, sand along that edge there, and I may have to cut some length off of this, but I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and just sand that section there and go from there. <laughs> I forgot to hit record, y'all. But anyway, I've got my measurement, so I'm going to cut off the little bit on the bottom, probably about five or six inches off that bottom section there, sand that down, and then we're going to do the, the border. I've got some of this three-quarter inch um, uh, round-over molding that I'm going to use for the border, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I'm going to do miter cuts on each one of these two. So... This is a scrap piece that Joe and I messed up when I first did the miter cut. I did the measurement wrong. And uh, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. It doesn't have to be pretty or perfect. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely not perfect. All right, I'm going to cut these corners off and then cut the miters. All right, y'all, we ran out of daylight, so we're going to take this project and take it in the house. All right, we're inside now. I'm going to continue on with this, and I did make a mistake. This isn't three quarters inch, it's 11 sixteenths, 11 sixteenths, okay? All right, I've got all my miter cuts done, so now I'm gonna glue this and use some one inch brad nails. What I did was I determined which side I want to be my top, and I chose this side up here. It's the, the cleanest looking side and it looks, um, looks the sh oops, looks the straightest. All right, I'm gonna run a bead of glue. And smear it with my finger. Whatever excess I have, I wanna wipe it on here. It doesn't matter where because it's gonna be glue down 
and tacked in with the brad nails. And then I'm just going to fit these all in and go all the way around. Look at this. <laughs> that does not line up perfectly, but it's okay. It's okay. It does not have to be pretty or perfect. It is what it is. Okay? Don't worry about it. It's, it's going to be okay if you mess up. It's okay. It's okay. I promise it'll be okay. All right, moving on. I got all my Altoid tins here. I got 25 of them. And we cut out some numbers with our Cricut machine and these little glitter stickers. Found these at the Dollar Tree. There's 25 in a pack. There's a snowman. There's uh, the reindeer. There's the snowman. There's a snowflake, which is cool. There's a red bow. And there's a Christmas tree. And we also did different colors in the um for the numbers. We chose gold, blue, red, and um, I can't remember the other number. Oh, purple. I think it was purple. Yeah, I think it was purple. So we just put a number on each one. And as you decorate these, make sure you have it on the same side that you want <gasps> the tin to open. Did I do it backwards? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's the way I wanted it. <laughs> So that each one, uh-oh. <laughs> Here I am telling y'all to make sure to put it so it's opening the same way, but you know what? Would I be Tiffany Outdoors if it was pretty and perfect? No, I would not be. So, If you want them to all open the same way, make sure you put them on the same way. I thought I did, but I was watching a movie at the same time, so I guess I didn't pay attention as closely as I thought I did. Oh, well. But, anyway. <laughs> all right, I'm going to get these, get my tins out of these plastic bags. I had put them back in a plastic bag so that the stickers wouldn't get messed up. And then I'm just going to arrange them on the board like a Christmas tree shape. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to try and make sure I don't have two, two gold numbers next to each other and two of the same sticker next to each other. And it's just going to be just random. And then what we're going to do is um, I'm going to screw these in place once I find my screws. And you want to space these out so that the doors aren't, when you're trying to open it up, that the doors aren't hitting each other. And you kind of want it still kind of even in your Christmas tree shape. See it's shifting over this way. I could shift it this way just a little bit. Let's try and get it as even as possible. Okay. 
It looks like I got them all on the side that I wanted it, except for this one. It is opening backwards. That's the only one that I did a little bit different. And it's okay. It's okay. I promise it's going to be okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Oh my goodness, y'all. That looks so good. I really love the way that looks. Look at that. That looks amazing. I think the kids are going to have a really good time hunting for the number. That's part of the fun. Jill always says that's part of the fun is looking for the number. Which one is next? All right. Let me go get the screws and I'll be right back. All right, we're going to give it a shot with these metal number 10 half inch screws and they're pan head, so that's okay. I'm going to put two in each one of these to keep it from spinning so that when you open it up, you can just flick the door open. All right, hopefully these don't split the wood. Perfect. I didn't mean to say perfect, y'all. <laughs> this is working out great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of these, and then I'll come back to you. Got them all down, y'all. I don't have them spaced out perfectly. I just kind of eyeballed it, and it is a little crooked, but you know what? That's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And these things are going to be great because these are large enough to hold a gift card. So you can put gift cards in there. You can put pieces of candy in there. You can put little notes in there. Just all kinds of cute little goodies that will fit in this thing. And I think my niece and nephew are going to really enjoy this. Now, one last thing to do to this. Now to see if I can get this thing to stand up on these legs. I'm kind of nervous about this. I'm kind of nervous that it won't work. Only one way to find out, guys. And let's see. I'll show you the size of this. 7 inches by 1 and 3 quarters by 7 inches. There you go. And I guess these are, I don't know what this is for. Maybe a shelf? I don't know. Medium arch corbel. Am I pronouncing that right? Corbel? Or is it corbel? But anyway, this is what I'm using. And it comes with, comes with some hardware. Here, let's see. Joe has my drill. I'll let her borrow it so she can work on her project. But I have this ratcheting screwdriver, and I'm just gonna start off by taking these this uh bracket off. Number one, I don't know how long these screws are. Oh, there we go. And number two, we don't need this bracket. Not for our purposes. There we go. Awesome. I'm going to save this. I might be able to use it for something else. I think I'm going to move it here. Like so. Go somewhere like right here in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and get this screw started start that one here 
Y'all, I'm just eyeballing this, if you notice. I'm not taking measurements. I'm hoping that um, this works out. Try and get this through most of the way. I'm going to screw it down until I start to feel the screw poke through, and then I'm going to hold hold it up there. And so far, I don't. Uh, yep, yeah, starting now. Okay, same thing here. And that one's starting to poke through. Okay. Ideally, I would use clamps because my thumbs are, my left thumb has arthritis in it horribly. All right, let's see if I can hold it on here strong enough to get it to catch. Oh yeah, that's on there, nice and firm. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the second one. You saw me do that one. I'm gonna go ahead and do the second one and then I'll come back to you. All right, y'all, moment of truth. Will these corbels hold this up? Let's see. <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing is tall. Oh no! It's wanting to fall forward. I wasn't expecting that. It's just not heavy enough. I'm gonna have to think of something else to get this. Uh, I need it at a slant, like a slight slant backwards. So I'm thinking a piece of wood wedged in there to have it angled backwards a little bit. Hmm, this will take some thinking. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, let's see here. I have a solution. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I have these scrap pieces of four by four. I only have three of them, but what I'm going to do for the fourth one, because I need two, two for each one, one for me and one for Joe. I'm gonna take these two two by fours, screw them together, and what I'm going to do with this screw this to the front and cleverly disguise these as little gifts. So I'm gonna paint them and make them look like little presents, put a little bow on top and make it look really cute. Not only is it gonna be cute, it's gonna be functional. All right, so I've already got these cut down. I went over them with the sand sander real quick just to smooth them out and get the dirt off of them. Now I'm gonna take them inside and paint them. All right, I got my paints ready. I've already uh, screwed the two two by four pieces together. And I've got some green. This is uh, Kelly green. I got some purple, purple iris. I've got red apple. And I've got two blue. Oh, two blue. Sorry, drifting here with the camera. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and paint these up. I'm just going to put a couple of cute little designs on them, paint them different colors, make them look like, um, like gifts. And I have some bows that I got from Dollar Tree that I'm going to stick right on top. I'm going to start off with the uh, bigger one first. And what I'm planning on doing is, let's see, a little more light. Is that too much light? There we go. What I plan on doing is using painter's tape like this. Bam. Like that. And then across here like this to give it the the illusion of a ribbon. And I'll paint that a different color. And I'm 
only going to do that on three sides, of course, because the fourth side is going to be up against the, um, the, the project itself. So, yeah. See, this one has a, a split there, so that's going to be towards the back, so that we got three good-looking sides to paint. All right. My favorite color is purple, so I'm going to start off with the purple iris. And I'm going to paint, maybe do like a patchwork or something. I don't know. I'm just going to make it look cute. I'm going to go ahead and paint this, and then I'll come back to you guys. Finish these up. Did this one with cute little squigglies. And make sure you paint the top also if you have to do this. Make sure you paint the top. I am going to be putting a bow up there, but you want it to look finished. You don't want it to look like raw wood up here. So I did paint the top and I just did some little design thingies here and here on what four sides. And then got the back. And I did paint along the edge on the back side just so it doesn't show through in case there's a gap or something. You don't have a, a spot of just plain nothing there I didn't miss I didn't miss that but that's okay it's gonna be all right did the same here just paint along the edge I did screw these two together and look at that it split right there dog on it I should have brought this screw in a little bit further in here like right here so it wouldn't split either that or drill pilot holes to keep to keep that from splitting like that but anyway all right, whoops, got these done. Now I'm gonna pull my board back, put it back up here, and then I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna put these. And then I'm going to take this oscillating saw and cut off the, the molding that I have on there. Let me pull the board back up here and show you what I'm talking about. All right, down here at the bottom of the board, I'm gonna take my block Stick it right here, and I'm going to take a pencil and mark the outsides so on each side, just like that. Bam. And then I'm going to take that line and continue it all the way down. Try to keep it as straight as possible. And then I'm going to take my oscillating tool and cut that out. I'm going to cut, cut, and I'm going to cut it this way to loosen up that glue because remember I put glue on this thing so that it was super strong. Let's see if these work. going to work nicely. Um, this fits right in that space that I cut out. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one and then I'll come back to you. Y'all that worked out so good. Now I'm going to take my pieces and clamp them down. I'm going to clamp on the side that the screw is in on the back on this one. That way I know where I can and cannot screw into get this as flat as I can and then just clamp it down nice and then the other one this one has a crack so I think I'll put the screws on this side I got more space on this side than I do the other one so I put the clamp here so I know the screw on the on this side in the back so I'm going to first drill some pilot holes from underneath and then I'm going to put my screw in. Oh no! Ooh. <laughs> oh boy, that was almost 
Whew, okay, saved by my Ninja Light reflexes. Let me put some weight on this thing because I do have it turned a different way. I think I'll use this as a, a weight. <laughs> oh, there we go. Let's see. Is it safe? Yep, there we go. All right, I'm going to crawl underneath here. Do my pilot holes, put in my screws, and fingers crossed this works. Set y'all up here. I got a little bit of a mess going on here. Moment of truth. Let's see. Oh. I'm scared to let it go, scared to let it go. Yes! Yes! Look at that. That worked out perfectly. Now they can come over and open these up. Yes! Yes! It worked! It worked. Okay. Now, I can finish this thing up today. Alright. Let me show you guys what I'm going to do to get this finished. Okay, this next part is where the Dollar Tree will come in absolutely handy. So, let me show you exactly what I'm going to do here. I have some of this garland and it came in a container like this. It's, there's 20 feet in there, guys. 23, I mean 20 feet for a dollar. 20 feet of this. So, Joe did this on her advent calendar so I wanted to do it on mine also because it looks so cute so I'm just going to take some hot glue and tack it down in certain spots all the way around and then I'm going to add some decoration I got these stars here little ornaments that I'm going to put I'm going to put those up there in these little empty blank spaces here there and there and I'm going to put a small, I got a small bow that'll fit up there. I wanted to put one of these stars up there, but it's a little too big. It'll, it's just not going to fit. So, bam, got these bows here. I can put one of those up there at the top to finish off the top. And then I can go ahead and start adding candy in each one of these tins and little small gifts in each one. I plan on putting some money for Ari, my oldest niece, who is in college, so I'll be putting money in there in her tins. And for my youngest nephew and my youngest niece, I'm going to be putting like little pieces of chocolate in there and little small amounts of money. I think they'll enjoy opening these each day. All right, let me go ahead and get this stuff decorated. Now I've got it all decorated. Now I'm going to put uh, the treats in the tins, which is going to be little pieces of candy and chocolate. And some of these I'll put some cash for all three of the, the kids so that they get a nice surprise on one of their days. And y'all, I did open some of these the wrong way, but it'll be okay. And I'll be putting the cash in later. But I do want to go ahead and get the chocolate and stuff in here now. I might go out and get another bag of candy. That way each one has two, maybe three pieces. And then I'm going to um, try and figure out who is going to be first to open up the their tin. And then go in that order. And then I'll put the... Um, Maybe put their name in it just to make sure that they get the right one. And then the cash in a couple of these. Can't do it for all of them, but a couple will have some, some nice little monetary treats.
enjoyed this year's Christmas craft and I hope you guys make one of these I hope this craft inspires you to make one and maybe you can even make something that turns out even better if you do post it in the comments below thank you for watching don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next episode bye